I've really focused on my fitness over the last several years. And I, I actually have always kind of focused on my fitness, but probably, you know, a combination of like eating healthier and my fitness kind of, cause it was like, I'm going to try to like beat my horrible eating habits and you just can't win when for me anyways, at a certain age, but you talked about, you started running during COVID and you really, it's really empowered you. And so tell about, I want to know about that story, but I also want to know how running has made you a better teacher. So I'm like, sure. interested because I think a lot of people, I think there's, I, I think there's a connection there too. And I know that there's probably, you know, kind of fulfilled you some way. So tell a little bit about your running story. Yeah, so um, I've shared with you, George, I am a mom of six kids. And so um, through that journey, there aren't a lot of things that I get to do that take me out of the house that I don't have a child that wants to go with me. And so I, I always share that it, I think it started as one day I said, I'm going to go run to Publix, but I never got the words to Publix out of my mouth when my children heard I was going to go run nobody volunteered to go with me. So I just put a period on it. And I was like, sure, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so, you know, I took my phone outside. I think I played Candy Crush around the corner and I like jogged back to the door. And, you know, that was my first run. Uh -huh. But it did eventually evolve into a passion. And so um, I decided in January, January 1st, 2020, that I would um, challenge myself to run at least one mile outdoors every single day. And I chose outdoors. One, I don't have a treadmill or go to a gym, but two, there's just something about being outside. I feel like the moment I step outside into nature, my blood pressure lowers. Mm -hmm. um, but I also found that running was my processing time. And so as a mom of six and a full-time teacher and a wife and a, and a sister and a daughter, you know, there wasn't a lot of time that I, I was able to process my day until I was too exhausted and fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So I started my running streak in January. And then in March of spring break was when we were sent home and we did not return. Mm -hmm. And so while I could have easily made that an excuse and stopped my running, I had students um, who were aware of my running streak. They knew what I was doing. And so I couldn't let them down. And so I continued to run. I would teach live in the morning and have all of my kids virtually log on. We'd break for lunch. I'd go run my mile. I'd come back all sweaty in my, in my running clothes and get back on after lunch for math. And they'd say, did you get your run done? And I'd say, yes, I did. <laughs> and so we talked about streaking, if you will. Right. And, and I encouraged them to choose anything that they don't do consistently that they wish they did. I said, for some, it's brushing your teeth. Like then when you start counting your days in a row, you don't want to go back to zero. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is it that you need to continue to do that if you just started counting it consecutively, it would motivate you to keep doing. And so for me, it was running. And so I would go out running, but I found that I would use my um, stories that happened while I was running as teaching analogies for my students. So, you know, I'm running and my shoelace comes untied and I stop and tie it. So the next day I would go into my class and I'd say, you know, sometimes in life, your plans get interrupted, but you stop what you're doing, you address the problem and then you get right back up right? Or um, it's getting ready to rain and, and I'm going out for my run. And in Florida, it rains, you know, all the time. Yeah. So I have two choices. I can break my running streak or I can run in the rain. And so what do I do? I, I choose to run in the rain. And, and so I do that because my passion didn't change. My mission didn't waver because the weather changed. I made a commitment and I, and I hold myself to that. You talk a lot about, George, keeping commitments to yourself and keeping appointments with yourself. That's what running is to me. Mm. But I equate it to the teaching profession too, because I think teaching can be like that for us. It can be that thing we have decided we're going to do come hell or high water, come rain or shine, because at the end of the day, it's the students that we are showing up for, not our circumstances. And so when I think about running, I, I prioritize it to the point that I would not ever not do it. It's funny, I, I shared once in one of my keynotes when someone asked me, what do you mean by prioritize it? I said, I know when I say that you think, okay, yeah, make it a priority. But I, I asked them, you know, on, on fist to five, how important is it that you brush your teeth every day? And so we'll have some four, some, some people might say three, you know, there might be a day you don't or wash your hair, right? But if I say, how important is it to put on a pair of pants or bottoms before you leave the house to go to work? It's a five every time. Mm -hmm. Nobody leaves their house 
without rearranging something to make sure that happens if it wasn't going to happen. That's running for me. Huh. I will rearrange my schedule. I will plan it out so that it happens. And if it doesn't happen the time or the place I needed it to, I'll think about ways to be innovative to make it happen. And I think that's how teaching can be for us too. If we have committed for the right reasons, it doesn't matter what legislation passes, what curriculum our district mm -hmm. adopts, right? Like you do it because you've decided to do it, not because all the conditions were right for it. So that's kind of like what running is for me. It's my processing time. It's my commitment to myself, but it's also my example to my students that we can do hard things.